My name is Spike Radway, and almost everybody here knows that I have celiac disease, since it's um, kind of common when you're eating, it's hard to miss it. So I wanted to um, talk about a few basics about celiac disease. And I'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit of filler for the program. But it's not named after the queen of salsa, just in case you wondered. It actually comes from the word cilia, which is up, um, little hairs along the inside of your intestine. It's not an allergy. And it's actually, if you look at Wikipedia, it's an autoimmune disease that arrives from an inappropriate response from a, a pathogen. And the substance that causes that autoimmune response is um, gluten. Gluten is found in wheat, rye, and barley. It's what gives elasticity to dough. It's also very hard to substitute for. It's in beer, and it's in lots of weird products like Twizzlers and malt products. But it's also not in corn, rice, or, um, or potatoes. And this is a before and after. Healthy parts of your intestine, the villi that, di that digest your food, and then what happens when it gets damaged by the um, autoimmune response. You can see the difference. These are some of the symptoms, anemia, vitamin deficiencies, um, fatigue, some other ones I don't want to talk about, really. <laughs> and there's a whole long list of, of symptoms. My wife will tell you that the first one's probably true, um, that there are also skin rashes. And I think Henry might want to get checked because of this, there's a short stature issue with people with celiac disease also. And uh, sometimes I think I still have brain fog, even though I'm, I've been treated already. These are the symptoms that I, have, I had. I was anemic was often tired, I had calcium deficiency, and I actually got osteoporosis, which made me feel like I had a lot in common with postmenopausal women. Um, you can get diagnosed by blood tests. There's also a endoscopic procedure, and there's a genetic test, which is kind of expensive, but if it runs in the family, that's a good thing to do. Um, Celiac disease is often undiagnosed by doctors. Most of the people in my support group have self-diagnosed themselves, and normally the doctors and the dietitians are not that, not that helpful. It might be better now that it's more commonly diagnosed, but it's been an issue in the past. I know when I first got diagnosed, I felt like I was going through the five stages of grieving. I actually went through all these phases. It's really true. Even though you're just giving up certain kinds of food, it's not like someone died. Uh, one in 133 Americans have celiac disease. Takes, the average time for being diagnosed is about 10 years. It's been increased because of the frequent systems. It's often um, misdiagnosed as irritable bowel, Crohn's, or colitis. Um, the ways you treat it is a gluten-free diet. You can't cheat on your diet. It's not like you can have ice cream and then spend another 20 minutes on the treadmill the next day. Um, you have to read labels really closely, and the thing I do, which helped with my osteoporosis, is exercise. Um, I think if the glass is, is half full, not half empty, there's lots of things I can't eat, but there's lots of things I can eat. And I know people that have worse illnesses than just being able to not eat certain kinds of food. My wife and I used to have separate toasters. You have to be kind of careful with um, how you treat your food and things like that. There's lots of support groups in town. In fact, that's how I met Howard Cass, his wife Cindy Kohler Cass is in charge of the celiac support group. So I met Howard when I found out he was a treasurer. It's like, all right, great. Someone I can try to see if help with CD Pug. <laughs> or that he was an accountant, excuse me. Um, there's a lot of gluten-free products now. But there, the place with medical stuff in, the, in this day and age has to do with money. And since there's no drug, the only thing that you make, can make money off of is food. There's lots of places I can eat. So there's a whole bunch of lists here of places I can go to. Well, Albatross is nice. They actually have gluten-free bread that they serve. There's a bunch of apps that can help you find gluten-free places to eat. Uh, I use the, the uh, gluten, find me gluten-free, I use quite frequently, especially when I'm traveling. So I, one thing that's kind of awkward with having celiac disease, it's not really that serious of an illness, but I feel like I'm being self-centered, and everybody knows because I'm always talking about where I can go. So I appreciate CD Bug for letting me pick some of the places we go to for our meetings after the meeting. And then I wanted to take my last slide to tell you I'm running a 5K race on Sunday. So if anyone wants to, um, to sponsor me, I'm, it's going to be a race for the gathering place. So um, 
I actually posted this, my presentation and the link on the, on the CDPUG blog in case you do want to sponsor me.